let's look at the basics. So here we talk about the basics. Now, going into strategy, right? When we talk about strategy, the first thing that often comes to mind is that it's war. Because we all know Napoleon was a, was a strategy, you know, he, he had strategy. And that's what made him famous. So if we were Napoleon, and only having a strategy would be fantastic. But if we didn't have any foot soldiers to run around to operate that strategy for us, it wouldn't work. So if we look at strategy, it's great to have the strategy, but where are the foot soldiers? And the foot soldiers are the you's and the me's in this picture. So let's look at how we get effective foot soldiers before we look at strategies. And the strategy begins with you and the content. So if this was you and the agency, you could work out your content with this agency. And you would say, okay, that's great. You know, we, we, should, we need to use the logo and we need to have it square because square is better than long and rectangular for social media purposes because most of the icons that we use are square. So let's change our logo and make sure our logo works in the square and all our other pictures work in the square just as much as they would work in any other format. But let's make sure that we've, we've looked at the square. And that's basically where your content's at. Because putting too much content out there is just going to be noise for people because you haven't really listened to what they want from you. So, and, of course, if you're just putting content out there and you've got three followers, well, are you really being effective with your time? But at the same time, we can't think that we mustn't put content out there because we haven't got any followers, because if you haven't put any content out there, you're not going to get any followers. And that's pretty much like starting a church. You wouldn't start a church, and if I wanted to start a church with just the few in the room here, are we going to have a message or are we going to have a tea party? You see, if I don't give you a message, then you're going to go somewhere else where you are going to get a message. But I can't just think, oh, because I've got 10 followers, I can't give them a message. So I've got to get it out and I've got to make this effective so that more people will come. So your content's always got to look as if you've got thousands of followers. It's an old business paradigm. You know, what we did in the old business paradigm, and this is so... What we've, you know, this is such a nugget for entrepreneurs. What we do is we all pretend that I'm the CEO and my wife, she's the financial director, and we make this thing, wow, this is a big company. So that's great. Looks good because everyone thinks they're dealing with a big company and someone lied to them somewhere and said, you've only got to deal with big companies. And I suppose in the South African context where we don't really push entrepreneurs, we all want big companies. So that was the lie that they all believed. But what happens on social media? Well, if you're a small person, I'll wait for your response. If you're a big company, I need a response within five minutes. Suddenly we have a dilemma, don't we? Who did you want to be? The big company or you want to be an individual? Because that's how people are going to see you. As an individual with a life and a family, and I, and I give you a message, I'll wait for that response. But if you perceived me and, you, and your intention was that you were a big company and that was the perception I got, suddenly I want to respond within five minutes. If I don't get a response in five minutes, start making my own stories. Now, we, this is easy. Eh? What happens, you know, you get this obsessive compulsive partner. They send you an SMS. You don't respond to them in five minutes. They start responding to their own SMSs. You know, who, who doesn't know people like that? Oh, that's great. See, we all know people like that because they do it. And they do it on Facebook. They love doing it on Facebook. You don't answer your friend's question. They answer it for you, and then they build, that, they build their own story. You don't even have to be part of it. That's what I love about Facebook. Okay, not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I think that's often the reason why people have moved away from Facebook. And if we see social media as Facebook, then we'll probably never get involved in social media because they, that, that's the low-hanging fruit and those friends that we probably should have got rid of a long time ago, but we just feel sorry for them. Okay, so coming back to what Seth Godin said, we didn't leave them better than we found them, okay, because, I don't know, we've, 
we found some need to talk to them forever and not help them. Because we know what their real problems are. We just haven't stood up to them and said what we should have said to them. You know, I thought of a nice saying, but I shouldn't say it because we're on video. But it, <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but I mean, Francois knows so much about technology, he might just be streaming this to the world. You never know. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of gadgets there that uh, anything could be attached. So, but John, that's it. So we, we've got to make sure that we're giving content and growing our followers. So it's not like Facebook. Okay? Facebook, we generally have this friends and we, and we build this friends and we go like, that's fine. We've got our seven friends and our community's closed and we'll talk to our seven friends. And you know why you need seven friends? Who's got less than seven friends? I'm glad. See, you need seven friends in your life. Because when your life is sort of near the end or at the end, you need one to read the book and six to carry the box. So now you need seven friends in your life. Otherwise, the boxes are going to travel very easily or uh, well, there's no one to give the message. So you need seven friends. You've got to continuously grow your friends because you're looking for the people that are looking for you, not the people you've found and that have found you already. So we need some other friends that are going to stimulate our thinking, not just confirm our thoughts all the time. So we need, we need friends to give us these new trends and we need to be listening to people to find out what those trends are. If you keep listening to the same people, you're not going to get that right. So you need to find new followers and grow your followers all the time. And then once you've got these followers, you can have interactions. Interactions could be defined as the conversations you have with them, the videos you play and share with them. By listening to people, you'll find out what questions you can ask. So you're they might not be engaged in a conversation, but you might be know what they like. So you would ask someone a question, how would I find an entrepreneurial development thing near Lanseria? And then someone else will go, and I, and I was on a course and I met this girl, Jane, and she's got something like that. But there was someone else on the course as well, and they work with a chartered institute and that. And then that's how the conversation develops. So you're always looking for conversations like that to develop. So who you are becomes very important. I need to know who you are. How do I connect with you? How can I find something that's interesting or different about you to recommend you? So let's go into the you and how you set up this you. And I, in this example, we're using Twitter. Starting with your username or handle. Try and make it as close to your name as possible. You see, if you were cute poppy at school, then you might not be the cute poppy anymore. You know, or you might not be wanting to be known as a poppy. Or if you were, want to be tea time tunny and everyone must know that you're tea time tunny, then it's cool. Then that's fine. But it's, your name is either who you are or who you want to be, or who you pretend to be, and it's not such a good idea to pretend to be things, because the problem with people who pretend to be things, that they say things that they would not normally say in real life, and they get themselves into real trouble. So when you are closer to your name, you're more accountable to yourself. So you're less likely to say stupid things. But when you tea time Tunny, you could say stupid things. Okay, not that she does, I actually... There's one of my followers on, on Twitter, and she was the one who gave me the feedback on what type of response people want. And her response was the most accurate. And she said, if you're a company, we expect you to respond within five minutes. If you're a person, we know you've got a life, and we will wait for your response. Another thing, if you, if you did not play number 10, if the whole world knew you were an asperger and you wore number 10, that's cool. Okay, and some of the rugby players do that. PS Peace uses number eight. If your name with the number has significance, that's fine. Just because Twitter or Google, Gmail or someone gave you a number, you don't have to use that number. And then by putting underscores in your name, all you've done is wasted a character. So you could have done like Quirst did, Quirst van Amava, and a capitalization or tea time tunny to separate the names. But don't put the underscores in because, firstly, 
it's a waste in your character, and secondly, search engines do not like you. You're the last thing to come up on a search when you've got an underscore in your name or in your text or anything like that. Here's your avatar or photo. So important, when you start on Twitter, or on most other things, they give you a funny little thing, but Twitter is quite cool because I thought it was quite appropriate. You know, you start off as an egg in Twitter, you're the little birdie that's going to hatch out the egg, and hopefully, you know, you do hatch out into a nice chick like Catherine. But of course, if you, if you are better looking, you probably get 30 times more results, but if you've got a photo, you get 10 times more results than you would do if you get uh, an egg. <laughs> so I think I get about five times results, so it's okay. If you want to, like Catherine is, change agent SA, if that's what you intend to do, and that's what you show to the world, then be consistent, be the change agent, and your name can be like that. And also the problem is her name is too long, so Twitter doesn't give you a name. So she had to be C. Constantinides, because Catherine Constantinides is just far too long. Then your bio. Seth again said, if you can't state your position, in eight words you don't have a position. People look at this and they go, no, but I'm a marketing manager. That's two words. Well, that's cool. Because, you see, the problem is when you're a marketing manager, people pop you in the box immediately and they go, oh, a marketing manager. Oh, you're a doctor. That's one word. Oh, cool. In the doctor box. You're an engineer. Back in the, in the one box. When you define yourself, this is your buyer. And it's effectively your CV. Because your last tweet is what people are going to measure you on. And they're going to see, oh, that was an interesting tweet. Who's this person who tweeted this? Then they'll look at your photo and they'll go, oh, that looks like a real person. Because that's how we do it. When we see some little icon or avatar or something like that, we go like, this person, we can't take them seriously. Okay? Because who are they? So often when we're doing with companies and there's a complaint, it's not that we ignore the complaint. It's just kind of like we're skeptical about this person who complained because they've got a, their name's Loving Trees and they've got a little seed or, or a root in their picture. And it's like, who's this person? I mean, they, they see themselves as very insignificant from their picture and they're not real. You know what? There's someone above them on the timeline that is real who's got a real complaint or a real suggestion or something like that. Let's respond to them first and if we get some time, we'll respond to this person. So, you know, do your brand a favor and be who you are. Put your real name, your real photo out there, and then tell people really what you do. So you can set up your bio to be whatever you want to be and what people are. Because I can promise you that if you ask me a terribly personal question, I'm probably not going to respond to you. Or I'm just going to try and change the subject. All right? But I do put like father in there. But it doesn't show that I'm particularly personal. But there are people, because by nature, I'm not a big nurturer. So I can't play like I am, because you're not going to get the nurturing soul from me. You're just going to disconnect with me if you think. But because we all have different strengths, I'll connect you with someone who is nurturing. When I realize that you like that, I'll go, I'll bring someone else into the conversation and they can look after you. So, you know, <laughs> that's just how we do it. So people always say, so is, does your bio have to be professional? No, no, it's just who you are. Just show who you are, as many different interests as possible. Okay, you can also see from that I'm not a very sporty person. But you can see that by looking at me anyway. So, <laughs> okay. So, but, it, but it, you know what I'm saying? So if, but if you're the sporty person and you do the mountain biking and the extreme sports, you'd put that in there as well. And they still wouldn't think that you're less of an engineer or less as a, of a doctor because you've put those things in. Because remember, you're trying to attract the people that have the same interests as you. And that's ultimately who you're connecting with. It's about following your interests. Because although you might be a very, very, very clever person in your qualification, and yes, you do need to be communicating about that, you've also got other interests. They mustn't be able to put you in a box. They must first engage with you, find out who you are, which day of the week they like you on, and then put you in a box. 
you see what you've done. You've, you've just done it much differently to everyone else. Because other people give you a straightforward answer. Doctor, engineer, lawyer, or which day of the week? Suddenly, huh? Which day of the week? Huh? Okay. That's cool. So you, you've got to find ways that will make people interested in you. Because otherwise, if they perceive you as a lawyer, whew, there you go. They're not interested in you anymore. So make sure that people are interested in you. Follow or talk. Do you notice the problem here? We've realized that we've told people for many, many months now, follow us on Twitter. Why should I follow you? You're not my leader. And that's the impression. You've just told someone, follow me on Twitter. And they go, oh, why? Why should I follow you? And that's really often what happens is we go, this person just followed me. Why do I have to follow them? Oh, yeah. Instead, we should be saying, talk. Talk with me. Talk to me. Let's have an engagement. Because follow doesn't say anything. It just means, you know, you can, you can follow the airline to find out if the flight's going to be late. You can follow the road to find out if there's a problem on the road. But are they going to talk to you? And that's what you... So you want to do things differently. Ask people to talk with you. Don't just follow, because what are they going to get out of it? And that's often the way we communicate things to people. Think about the person, the you that you're communicating with. What do they want? How are we going to communicate with this person? Or are we just going to tell them, come, follow me? We often think about that and we go like, or do we think about it? That's really, so when we say something, do we think about how the other person is going to receive it? Or do we just say it? Because that's how we've been conditioned. You know, and, and that's the condition that Twitter says, follow me. Okay, let's follow. <laughs> you know? No, we don't really. We go like, follow? No. Why? There's a hundred other people I'd like to follow. I don't need to follow you. But if that person, everyone else says follow, and you say, come, talk to me. Come, talk with me. Let's have a discussion. And your initial invitation is that we're going to have a discussion. Well, that's cool because now suddenly I realize there's something in it for me. There's not, it's not just about you. So, you know, the intention again. What is your intention? Do you just want people to follow you? Do you just want them to know about your content? Or do you actually want to engage with them and find out what they need? When we have followers, out of 100 followers, what is the, the sort of split of them? And 90 of the 100 followers are lurkers. You start off there as a lurker. You're not really sure how to engage. You were invited to this party. You don't know anyone at the party, so you kind of like check out the party, see who you could possibly connect with, who might be interesting to talk to, who's going to come talk to you. So that's kind of like the lurker. Then you get the, the actives, the interactives. And, and you know, if, then companies always say, so we're the real prospects. We can just 10, 1% are real prospects. Yeah, so that's why you need to find those people that are looking for you as opposed to those ones you're looking for. And the way that they find you is through the interactions that you're having with other people. And you become interesting and then they find you. When we look at pure content, of what the, I mean, the agency is now going to create that content if you weren't able to do it yourself. Four in ten pieces of content... And this is in, a, in a, a space you could almost say a day, especially on Twitter, because it's real time. So four in ten messages going out can be engagement. Not more than four in ten. Probably less is better. Okay? But less than one in ten is a sales thing. So a sales thing would be determined as we're having a special, we're having an event, we're having all those funny things that might get people to buy. We want you to come to our launch. Okay? Hmm. I, I would say that you'd have to engage with people a lot more than to just put them there. So this is a, this is a, a guideline, but really don't use this as the law. Because I can show you that if, if your content on the other 10 or 6 things out there is not great, and it doesn't have anything that the people want, don't try to sell to them. Because then all they're going to do is unfollow you. So you've got, to, you've got to listen, find out what they need, and then through finding out what they need, 
you can push a little bit of your agenda, but then you do it subtly. And you're going to learn. And you're going to learn very quickly when you do it here. So I can't tell you how to do social media properly. But the only way that you're going to do it properly is when you get involved and that you're actually swimming. Because when you're moving, we can actually help you then. And other people will help you. When I say we, you'll get feedback from those people who follow you and go like, I didn't like that because you didn't play nicely there. So it's all about this playing nicely. It's the kindergarten example. You go to kindergarten, you think you're the big kid, tough kid, only to find out there's a few more tougher kids there. They'll steal your Samis, they'll do those type of things for you, and then you'll realize that I must play nicely so that I can have some friends and get good feedback and that they can share their Samis with me. And that's how we learn. Now, if you're not there in social media, unfortunately, you don't learn. Why Twitter is so effective is because when do we really get into trouble in life? We, you know, if we don't say anything, we'll never get into trouble. Well, when we start saying things, we get into trouble almost immediately. And of course, when we give too much information, we really get into trouble. Before you share on social media, Ask them for clarification if they have asked you a question and you don't quite understand it. Or their language is not quite the language that you expected because they might not have English as the first language. And then suddenly that their communication isn't as clear as it could be. Ask for clarification first before answering those sort of questions because that's when you could really get into trouble, when you give too much information. So they don't care how much we know until they know how much you care. It's a relationship, remember? When they feel comfortable with you, when they know what you're about, when you've shared of yourself, and even if, it, like we mentioned earlier, if it's not such a personal level, that's fine, okay? Because they understand you for who you are and the way you communicate. Make sure that you're allowing people to understand that you understand them. And, and get that through in, your, in, in the way you communicate with people. Understand them. Ask them questions about what they've just said. So it's typical sort of, you know, good management style stuff that you learnt at some stage in your life. Ask people questions. And the only way that I can really know that you've listened to me, how do we know when someone's actually listened to us? When they ask questions. That's it. So if they never ask you a question, they've actually never listened to you. So do them the favor of asking them the question, even though you've, you know exactly what they said. Just say, ask them something more. Is there something more you'd like to share? Because remember that often people are trying to find significance by what they do online. You're trying to find significance as well. You're trying to justify why you need to spend all this time online. And when people start giving you that sort of feedback and asking you questions, suddenly it becomes significant for you. So if it's significant for you, make it significant for them as well. And then the little thing about digital eye contact. Now, digital eye contact's easy. You send me a message, and it says there your name, at whatever, and then I go, hi, Jane. Hi, Alter. I don't just use their name, although it says Alter Brown in their name, I still go, hi, Alter, I hope you're having a great day. Thanks for this, whatever the, you know, and then, so that's what we call digital eye contact, when you actually address the person, even though they, their name is there. It's just like a polite thing to do. And you find you get so much better reactions from people, so much softer reactions, because it's like that caring that you've just shown them, you're interested in them. Not just giving them a reply, you actually showed interest in the person themselves. If you look at a, a Twitter timeline, for instance, make sure that your Twitter timeline doesn't just look like you. So if, what happens is, if there was just my face down the side there, and it doesn't matter what I say, when people go, oh, that's really, it's just about Richard. 